Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, in Leesburg, Florida at the present time in my computer room in the clubhouse of the community in which I live. So hopefully I won't get disturbed by anybody. Normally there's nobody down here on Saturday afternoons and it's raining outside right now in central Florida. Um, I would say the first thing is I probably gave the wrong title to this presentation. Yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about how inkjet printers work. But the essence of this presentation is if you're out there with a printer and you're paying anywhere from $15 to $35 for a replacement cartridge on your printer, there is a better way. And that's the essence of what I'm going to talk about for the next hour. I try to maintain a level of speech that fits everybody. I don't like to talk too fast. And if I do, please raise your hand and let me know. The overview is just what it is. I want to talk about the modus operandi for my printers and how you can get into the same thing. But before we start, we need to understand some terms that go along with printers. And I'm talking specifically about inkjet printers. A printhead is the essence of your printer. And when you get ready to go buy a new one, you have to replace with one that will work in your printer. The print head contains all the ink that is being used at the time and the print head is either on the cartridge or the print head is in the printer depending on the manufacturer. Ink cartridges vary. Some of them are single cartridges for each color and some of them are two cartridge printers, one being a black cartridge and the other one being a color cartridge. Again, depending on who makes the printer. But if we have a print head design, then there's two types. One being a fixed head and one being the disposable head. The fixed head printer is designed to last the life of the printer. I have an Epson Workforce 500 fixed head printer and I've been using it for seven years. Canon and Hewlett Packard also make some excellent fixed head printers. Where, in fact, again, the print head is inside of the printer, not on the cartridge. And then, of course, we have the disposable head cartridges. And sometimes you can refill these, but every time you do refill them, you put more wear and tear on the print head. And Sometimes that shortens the life of that cartridge. Third-party inks can work for a disposable head printer, but you have to be careful about getting the right one. Now let's talk a little bit about the technology and how these two types of print heads work. The, taut, <laughs> the technology that goes with inkjet printers is called drop-on-demand, and it's either thermal or piezoelectric. 
and the main difference between them is on the thermal printer print head you have a metal plate and on the piezoelectric print head you have a crystal that vibrates and when the metal plate heats up it squirts ink out when the crystal vibrates it squirts ink out onto the paper with the thermal head the ink acts as a coolant now this is important to understand from the perspective of if you have a thermal drop on demand cartridge and there is no ink inside of the print head and you heat the metal plate up you can destroy it so you have to be careful with thermal drop on demand cartridges you have to make sure that you keep them refilled don't try to use it when it's empty a lot of people do that they say well you know I'll just keep on printing until it doesn't print anymore the thermal drop on demand sometimes called bubble jet printers again have that little metal resistor in there it heats up it creates a bubble the bubble busts the ink is pushed out of onto the paper and then what you get back is a vacuum that sucks more ink into the print head from the cartridge reservoir and this is basically what that may look like a heating resistor a firing chamber the print head nozzle The piezoelectric printers, again, use the same kind of technology. Epson came up with this one. And the crystal vibrates. It vibrates inward. And a small amount of ink is squirted out through the nozzle head and onto the paper. And this is basically a drawing of what that might look like. So when you, we talk about an inkjet ink cartridge, some of the cartridges that are made have single color or three colors in them, and all of them may have a sponge inside the cartridge. The sponge is in there for a reason. As the print head moves back and forth inside the printer at a fast speed, squirting ink out, you may in fact get sloshing of the ink. If you have a sponge inside of the cartridge, then the ink doesn't slosh around. Here's a picture of a typical single color cartridge and the reservoir is this outer piece here and the connection to the printer is down here in the lower left hand corner the electrical connection now what's unique about those electrical connections is that they contain chips and we'll talk a little bit about this a little later inkjet cartridges may also look like this. This is a Hewlett Packard. And the price of this thing runs some $15 to $40. And this one happens to be a standard cartridge, not an extra filled one. And they're available at most stores, these type of cartridges, for the printers that use them. But if you take this cartridge and you cut the top off, here's what you see. Inside that cartridge is the soft sponge material. If and when you get to the point where you can refill these cartridges, then you have to make sure 
that you put the ink down as far as you can inside the sponge so it settles at the bottom or after you refill it you have to wait hours or days for the ink to settle down through the sponge area and into the bottom of the cartridge. This is the color cartridge for the same printer and of course you can see that there's three chambers for the three different colors cayenne, magenta, and, and uh, red, yellow um, and you have to be careful if you refill these type of cartridges where all three colors are in one cartridge because if you overfill one of the chambers it can bleed into the other chamber and then of course that ruins your color even some single cartridges have the foam in them here I've got a picture I took myself of some single cartridges with the foam in them and this single cartridge has the foam removed and that's the good part um, but again the foam is in there to keep the ink from sloshing around and of course the foam takes up room for itself and leaves you less room for the ink what is the most expensive liquid available to you it's probably ink okay some print chips that are located behind the electrical connection on the cartridge have a date set on them and therefore your cartridge will not work after that date some cartridges have ink remaining in them because of the sponge but there's no way to tell unless you cut the cartridge open and then of course it's not usable after that also it's customary for the manufacturer of the printer to send you a cartridge with the printer and those cartridges usually contain only seven milliliters of ink now it's hard to envision sometimes what seven milliliters of ink looks like but if you take a look at my next picture you'll see what seven milliliters of ink looks like on a paper plate not ver very much ink at all and the manufacturer is selling you a printer at a reasonable cost sometimes even a loss to them because again they can charge you ridiculous prices for the ink that goes with that printer there is an excellent article on the internet I'm showing it at the bottom the link to it and that article written by Consumer Reports uh, covers just about what I'm saying during this presentation if I checked this out a day a day and a half ago and that article still exists on the internet it's available to anybody that wants to go and bring it up so how do you save money on printing what can you do so that you're not using up your ink at a fantastic rate and therefore spending more money to buy replacement ink or replacement cartridges well you can always print in draft mode you can print in 
Grayscale. Some printers call draft mode and grayscale the same thing. Other printers. And of course, you need to go to your printer setting to set up whether you're going to print in final or in draft or grayscale. The low quality is usually good enough for what you want to get depending on what you're going to use it for. Also, there's been a couple uh, studies done by universities in the past that say that if you use Century Gothic font, you save 31% over Arial. And you can save about $20 a year. This entire presentation that you're looking at today was made on PowerPoint 2013 using Century Gothic font. PC World did an exclusive significant research on third-party ink cartridges. And there's their bottom line. If, of course, you're into printing a lot of pictures, you may want to stick with OEM ink, but I've talked to some people that belong to the Lake Sumter Computer Society who are into a lot of pictures and they use a third-party ink and find no problems with that. So, there's a couple different ways to save money. Purchase compatible cartridges. Refill them up to 10 times. And I'm talking about the cartridges that have the print head on the cartridge. Again, don't try to fill a cartridge that's been sitting around for weeks or months. Even people that know what they're doing, i.e. professionals, <laughs> have problems with that because the cartridges have been sitting around for weeks or months and the ink has dried up in the print head. Again, the cartridge that has the print head on it, the first sign that you get that it may be going dry, you need to refill it and keep it filled that way. Here's the biggest thing on how to save money. Don't turn your printer off. And everybody goes, what? I turn my printer on, I print something, then I turn it off. Why should I leave it on? Well, when you turn it off, the printer goes to a certain position and it dumps the ink out of the print head into the bottom of the printer into an absorbent pad. Then when you turn it back on the printer reloads the print head from the cartridge reservoir. And you print something then you turn it off and again any ink that's still left in the print head is dumped to that absorbent pad underneath. There are no moving parts in your printer except when it's printing. There's no fan running. There's no software running. Occasionally a little cycle will go through on your printer and heat the uh, resistor metal plate in the cartridge, not completely enough so that it squirts ink out, but heat it up a little bit to keep the ink liquid in there. All right? Including a nozzle check, if you do cleaning or nozzle check 
anything else like that, you're dumping ink, all the colors, into the bottom of the printer. Now you say, now wait a second. How can you be dumping ink into the bottom of the printer? Depending on the manufacturer, you have felt pads like this in the bottom of your printer, or you may have sponge pads, or you may have a spittoon, okay? And this is where the ink that's dumped when you turn the printer off goes. And when you've dumped enough ink into these receptacles at the bottom of your printer, then you can have problems with your printer leaking, or you can have problems with your printer shutting down. I have uh, taken apart four or five different printers in my time and found all sorts of pads and spittoons in the bottom of the printer that collected ink. If you're going to turn your printer off, don't just unplug it. Even if you have a lightning storm, don't just unplug it because when you just unplug it, the printer does not have a chance to go to that position on in the printer where it dumps ink into the pad or into the spittoon. So you unplug it, the printer doesn't move at all, the ink dries up in the print head, you go to turn the printer back on, you got a problem. The print head is clogged with dried up ink. So, properly power down your printer when you're going to turn it off. My rule of thumb is simply this. If Joyce and I are going to leave the house for more than three days, I turn my printers off. If I'm not going to leave the house, I leave it on even though I may only print once or twice every three days. You dump more ink from the print head than it takes to print a page normally. Not a picture on a page, but of course, words on a page. Here's a picture. Oops, cleaning head. I'm sorry, cleaning head uh, process. Okay, when you run a cleaning routine on your printer, okay, the <laughs> ink goes into an area called a spittoon. And sometimes if you get too much ink inside the spittoon, it can stack up, touch, touch the print heads as they move across that area and actually clog up the print heads because they're little tiny holes, not even uh, as big around as a human hair. Let's take a look at a picture of a spittoon out of an HP printer. We have a spring-loaded rubber wiper that wipes across the head and then right next to the rubber wiper is this area right here and this is called the spittoon. And this is where you dump ink. So Again, how do we save money on the ink that we buy for our printer? It's not hard, but first you need to find out what the normal price is for your ink cartridges by going back to the original equipment manufacturer. Sometimes they have sales, but normally you're going to find that the ink is pretty expensive. Then the next thing you need to do is go to Google or your favorite search engine and Google your printer. The example I show there is I Googled Epson Workforce 500 refill cartridges. And then I looked through what the results that I got out of that. Then I googled again Epson Workforce 500 refurbished cartridges. 
And then I Googled Epson Workforce 500 Cheap Ink. And I kept on looking around until I found somebody that was going to supply me with either cartridges or ink at a reasonable price compared to the price that I should or would pay for the original equipment manufacturer. Find the best replacement. And sometimes they're not the cheapest. And, of course, we have seen in the last couple of years an awful lot of storefronts that are all of a sudden supplying cartridges or refilling cartridges for people who bring them in. If you go to the internet or you go to a local area storefront, I think it's important that you know what is there, what if policy. They're going to be your supplier for ink. What if? You let them refill your cartridge, you take it home, you stick it in your printer, and it doesn't work. What are they going to do? You contact somebody on the internet, you replace their cartridge, your cartridge with one of theirs, it doesn't work. What are they going to do? That's what I call the what-if policy. Because a good person who's a good supplier will replace the cartridge or give you some procedures to follow to make sure that the cartridge is in fact working as it should and maybe you have made some little mistake in putting it back in the, in the printer. Replacement cartridges come in high capacity and I've given a couple examples here of what I consider a high capacity cartridge and they are a savings. Okay, They can be economical. A low capacity or starter cartridge again usually comes in with about seven or eight milliliters of ink. Not very cost effective. What kind of printer do I need or do I have or can I refill? And the manufacturers are getting smarter every day or more proprietary every day and of course this is constantly changing. Um, Lexmark cartridges have a built-in counter and so they can't be reset. Sometimes when you buy replacement ink cartridges you need to get a cartridge resetter which is a little handheld device that resets the chip inside the cartridge behind the electrical contacts so that when you stick it back into your printer it will say I'm full and I'm ready to go. Also I've gotten feedback from people who say I have a Hewlett Packard, Dell, Canon, whatever type printer and if I leave it on usually after 15 minutes it seems to shut off. Well my experience with that is that the printer is really going into a sleep mode and it isn't shutting off. And once you command from your computer over to your printer for it to print again, it will automatically wake up and go back to work. So turning it off by itself is not really going off. It's going to sleep. And it doesn't normally go to the park position and dump the ink. Very few printers ever made actually can tell how much ink is left in a cartridge. It's just almost impossible to do that. So, this little chip that they put behind the electrical contacts either has a date set on it or some other limiting factor that says 
you know, if I print 25 pages, and I'm just picking an arbitrary number, then I'm going to tell the printer I'm out of ink. And guess what? You're throwing ink away because you're replacing the cartridge because it said it was out of ink. Okay? Some printing com printer oh, <laughs> printer manufacturers are now changing the chips on their cartridges. And so the when you stick the cartridge in a printer, the chip says, oh, I'm this kind, and if it's not the right kind, the cartridge will be rejected. Uh, some printer manufacturers are also doing a self-destruct on the chip that they put into their cartridges. So when you buy a cartridge, you're paying extra for the chip that prevents you from shopping for the best deal on a printer with replaceable ink cartridges. Also, a lot of people are concerned about warranty. Well, <laughs> the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, 1975. Refilling a cartridge makes good sense. I have an Epson Workforce 500. I've been refilling it for about seven years now. And I have the right kit for the printer model that I have. I use the right ink. Refilling the ink cartridges is a little bit of a messy job, but when I do it, I do it with a piece of newspaper down and old clothes on so I don't ruin anything. Ink composition varies from one manufacturer to the next and especially with bubble jet, thermal bubble or bubble jet pinners, um, if you're using the wrong ink, it won't heat up like it's supposed to, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But most manufacturers want you or require you to use their approved ink. And if you're using somebody's refill kit or buying your ink somewhere else or your cartridges somewhere else, they may in fact say, well, you know, you use the wrong ink. You use the wrong cartridge. We're not going to stand behind your warranty. If you have a printer that has a cartridge that has the print head built into the cartridge, you don't want to refill these more than two or three different times. Again, because the print head will begin to deteriorate and give you some pretty sloppy printing. If you go to Wikipedia and look up inkjet refill kits, they have a very good article in there about that whole ball of wax. And it becomes pretty simple for you to understand what's being done there. Your ink cartridges will eventually wear out. And again, we're talking about the cartridges that have the print head on them. But regardless of what kind of cartridge you're using in your printer, if you see streaks or if you see areas where ink fails to print, then this is time for you to be concerned about the cartridge or the print head. And it's time for you to replace the cartridge or refill it.
years ago, when printers were made, they had two cartridges, a black one and a colored one. And the colored one was three colors, and the black one was for the black ink. And nowadays, this is not the norm. You can buy many different, many different printer from different manufacturers that have four, five, or six cartridges in them. Usually four or six, okay? And what's the advantage to that is when one ink runs out, you can replace the cartridge only for that ink instead of replacing the three different ink colors because you have a single color cartridge. That's hard to say. Multicolored cartridges, the disadvantage is that you rarely need to refill all the colors at the same time. This is where you have a cartridge that has three colors in a single cartridge. Okay? And if you, again, refill these types, you got to make sure that you don't overfill and end up putting a different color into the cartridge reservoir alongside the one you're refilling. Reservoir cartridges, they're called that because basically that's all they are, is a cartridge that contains um, significant amount of ink. They don't have sponges inside. They uh, don't have print heads on them. They're easy to refill and they can be repeatedly refilled. I picked the Epson Workforce 500 printer for that reason. And I've been using the same cartridges for about five years out of the seven okay. and I buy the ink in 100 milliliter bottles good printer ink information websites wikihow, wikipedia um, all these articles uh, can help you understand what it's like to do your printer ink yourself instead of going to the store and buying that original equipment manufacturer's expensive cartridge. I have two trusted suppliers that I use when I order ink for myself or for people in my neighborhood or for people who belong to the Lake Sumter Computer Society, which we have about 117 members. And the first one is CCS Digital. Izzy's up there in Rockaway, New York. Uh, he has an email. He has a phone number. He has a mailing address. And he has a what if policy that's excellent. I have ordered ink for 50, 60 different people. I live in a neighborhood of 650 homes. It's a 55 plus community and I've ordered ink for many of my neighbors and if I have a problem, Izzy fixes it. He takes the cartridge back, he gives me hints on how to make it work right, etc. He's got a lot of experience, and he's good with it. The downside to CCS Digital is, is he does not carry ink for every printer, for every printer made. And so, if you don't have the right kind of printer, is he's not for you. I would say... And this is a shot in the dark based on my years of 
dealing with Izzy that most of his cartridges run from anywhere from three to nine dollars per cartridge. That's even the single or two cartridges, excuse me, that go into a printer. I've very rarely seen him charge over nine dollars for a single cartridge in a two cartridge printer. Now, the second resource that I've used repeatedly when Izzy doesn't carry the cartridge for the printer is www.inkquick.com. They have good prices, they have an excellent what if policy, and again, they have an email, a fax number, and a mailing address. Let's take a look at what Izzy's website looks like. This is CCS Digital website. Another reason I like Izzy is because he takes PayPal. So when I order cartridges from him, I usually pay with PayPal. That makes it very easy for me to do all of that. Notice he covers Epson, Hewlett Packard, Brother, Canon, and then he has toners for Brother HP. And if you know either your cartridge number or your model of your printer, you can find the ink at his website. Let's take a look at the web page for InkQuick. You notice that InkQuick now covers a whole host of different printers that are available on the open market. And again, they have good reputation. Their shipping is $3.95 and uh, they also take PayPal. Uh, going back to Izzy's site, my experience with Izzy is that uh, he charges you $7 shipping when you order ink from him. If you order one cartridge, it's $7. If you order 20 cartridges, it's $7. So there's advantages and disadvantages to that. Ink Quick, $3.95 is their normal shipping. Normal. This is what the refillable Epson cartridge looks like that I have in my Workforce 500. Okay? And as you can see, it's translucent. And when I go to refill this cartridge, I can hold it up to the light and see how much ink I have in the cartridge before I start to refill it and see how much ink I have when I'm finishing refilling it. And of course, these Epson cartridges have the print head in the printer. When you set this cartridge down into its uh, seated receptacle, there's a plunger that goes up inside of here and opens this thing up so that the ink can flow down to the print head. The Epson refillable cartridges have a translucent plug here that you have to take out. Once you take that plug out, air can get into the cartridge. When air can get into the cartridge, ink can get out. In some cases, cartridges have a little piece of yellow tape that you have to peel off the cartridge before you set it in to the printer. These Epson cartridges also have a plug in them. The plug is the same color as the ink that goes in there. You pull this plug out, this is your refill hole here. Some printers will take continuous ink systems. It looks something like this and you have this long supply hose that goes up inside the printer and connects to each one of the cartridges and you can do an awful lot of printing with this much ink sitting alongside. Here's the six different colors. The Epson Artisan 835 will take the continuous system. Here's a picture of one. You can get a lot of printing out of that. Bottom line, 
Number one, find out what kind of printer you have. Google the make and model. Find out as much information about it as you can. Step three, find a supplier. If you find a local supplier or an internet supplier, on your first dealings with them, make a small order. Check them out before you get burned. Also, check out their what if policy. Shop around till you find the best deal. And the best deal may not be the cheapest. I have some printer suggestions for you. If you don't care about color, a laser printer from Brother is a fantastic printer. Okay? They're in the $100 range, okay? And you can get toners for these at about $20, and that's good for 2,500 pages. If you like the multifunction color printer, then the best ones on the market nowadays are Epson Workforce 3500 series. 3520, 3530, 3540. I just ordered a 3520 cartridge, or excuse me, printer for my next door neighbor, and it was $139 off of Amazon. They duplex, they're fast, they don't use a lot of ink, and you can buy the double-sized blacks. If you're in an artist and into photography, or if you're a photographer and into photography, then you may want to get into the Epson Artisan 1430. It'll print as big as 13 by 19. They got six colors, CD, DVD printing, and also you get Adobe Photoshop Elements free with the purchase of that printer. And I'm finished. I encourage you to email me anytime if you have questions. I encourage you to find yourself a reasonable supplier for your ink for your printer and take care of your printer by leaving it on and turning it off only after you've decided to leave the house or the printer for more than three days. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Are you there, Jim Evans? Yes, I am. Thank you, Jerry. There was a question earlier about um, laser printers, um, both CC Quick and and then the other one, they, they both handle laser printers? Uh, no, I, I'm, no, I'm not into laser printers. Do the suppliers you recommend all supply toner for laser printer? Yes, CCS Digital does and Inkwick also does. Yes, you want to check them both out to get the best price. Uh, again, CCS Digital supplies toners for a limited number of printers, but um, ink quick, they cover a bigger field. Okay? Thank you, Gabe Goldberg. Clap, clap, clap. Uh, Maggie, if you're asking a question, if you want to just type in the chat box what your question is so we can get you taken care of. All right. Hey, how was my timing? You were right on the button, I think. <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to stop the recording here in a minute or two to see if there's any more questions coming in. Is there anyone recommended for inkjet refill purchases? Uh, yeah, again, um, I would go with uh, CCS Digital for inkjet refill purchases because in the case of some printers he offers uh, a single cartridge throw away uh, ones that can be uh, refilled and uh, used a limited number of times and ones that can be refilled and used forever <laughs> 